we're talking on this programme about our personalities and how they are really meant to operate. And we're discussing the various levels at which we human beings exist. We have, of course, come to this through our discussion of the general topic that we've been studying over the past eight or nine months. What is the meaning of life? What's the point of it? Why are you here? What's the purpose in your being here? Where is it all going to lead to? And we've come through long discussions, as you can guess, with all kinds of intellectual undergirdings that we've undertaken. And we've come to the point where we're now discussing the personality itself and how it is meant to fulfill the plan that was created by the maker of the world for you and for me. And you remember we've said that he is an intelligent personal being who wants other people to be his family, to love him and to be his friends. And that's why we were created. And that's why you're created. That's why you exist. Because he wants you personally to be related to him in love. He wants you to love him. And to that end, he has made us with the same capacities as he himself possesses. Obviously in a finite way, but still with those capacities. He has given us uh, the ability to have a body that can be perceived, a physical body, just as he is able to create material things. He has given us a soul which is the psychological part of us, just as he has one. And he has given us a spirit that is able to relate to him. And we've been discussing what the spirit does, how it really is the part of us, the very essence of ourselves that enables us to communicate with the creator of the universe. And it has that ability of communion. It has also the ability to know what we ought to do through intuition. And it has also the ability through conscience to judge us and constrain us to live up to the best that we have perceived. And what we're talking about now is the psychological part of us or the soul part of us. We get that from the Greek word suke, which becomes in our English psyche and psychological and psychiatric and all those other compounds. And the soul is the part of us that makes us particularly human. And we've been discussing how the soul has the ability to judge and evaluate things through the mind or the intellect. It is the part of us that enables us to perceive relations and correlate similarities between things and differences between things. It enables us to reason about things and to argue about things. Many of us, of course, think this mind is the part of us that can discover truth, absolute truth. Well, actually, it can only examine what truth is presented to it or what facts are presented to it. So if certain truths aren't presented to it, it can't examine them. So the mind is limited by its own finite ability to know all truth. And uh, therefore, it's uh, invalid to expect the mind to lead us to truth. The mind actually supports what you want it to support. That's why barristers are able to defend people whom they don't really believe are innocent because they can direct their minds to filter out and select the evidence that will prove the person innocent or select the evidence that will prove them guilty. So the mind can evaluate and select and isn't itself an absolutely reliable means of discovering truth. Nor are the emotions. We've started to talk about another function of the soul, which is the emotions. Uh, that is mentioned often in that old book called the Bible. Uh, and wherever you find the word soul, it, it really, you can find that at times it means mind, at times it means emotions. Uh, here's a piece here in a book called Samuel. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but First Samuel 18 and verse 1 runs like this. When he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And obviously, the whole ability to have affection is found in the soul. The soul has, uh, through emotions, 
the ability to feel affection for other people. So the emotion of affection and of love is experienced in the soul. So also is the emotion of feeling. Uh, that is where you feel certain things within yourself. Uh, I don't know if you've read much of the Psalms. It was the old hymn book of the Jewish church in the Old Testament times. And in Psalm 42 and verse 5, uh, it runs like this. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Psalm 42 and 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Well, in the soul, you have the ability to feel feelings, to feel anxiety like that, or depression, to feel anger, to feel elation or happiness. It's through your emotions that you feel those feelings. It's uh, through your emotions that you can have strong desire for either things or for people or for situations. You can have strong feelings of desire. Now, many of us, of course, have found the emotional life so strong within us that we tend to think that's where all truth is found. What we shared yesterday and the day before was, of course, that the emotions are tied very closely to the body. When you blush, of course, your emotions send signals to your blood vessels and they release more blood into your cheeks. When you're nervous, uh, your emotions of anxiety and worry and nervousness send signals to the glands that secrete fluids in your mouth and that dries up. So just as your emotions affect your body very directly, so your body, of course, has a very direct relationship to your emotions. And that's why people try to find happiness and elation through influencing the body, either in the orgasm of sexual intercourse or through pumping the old cocaine in or sniffing the drugs or pumping the old heroin in. Uh, wherever you can influence your body, uh, you are able to influence your emotions. And so many people think, ah, absolute uh, r truth and happiness uh, and satisfaction can be found in the emotions through us simply pumping stuff into our bodies. And of course, that's the utter invalidity and foolishness of the whole drug scene because it isn't finding truth at all. We come into great moments where we seem to fly above the earth and above all its troubles and worries, either through alcohol or through drugs, and we think, ah, this is wonderful. Well, it's just a, it, it's a chemical fantasy that bears no relationship to either present or future reality. It is just an absolute game we're playing with our bodies. In fact, we're actually messing up our emotions because we're making them more and more dependent on the body and uh, less and less dependent on the part that they need to be dependent on, the part of us alone that can find truth, which is, of course, our spirits. So the emotions are part of our souls. And then another vital part of our souls is the will. It is in the soul that we exercise our wills. The will is the power to choose. It is the instrument for our decisions. It is the part of us that can decide what we're going to do and can make our mind, our body, actually our emotions do it. So the will, in a sense, is the kingpin of our souls. Of course, we don't treat it as such at all. Most of us, except those of us who are very strong-willed, and even we are strong-willed because often our wills are enslaved by some other part of us, but most of us have wills that are non-existent. We're about the weakest willed creatures probably that ever walked the earth this present generation. Most of us just are like jellyfish who wander and bounce this way and that according to the pressure of the circumstance or the influence of the person that we're talking to or the example of the TV program that we're watching. And the will is virtually 
non-existent in most human beings today. Instead of being the king of the soul and directing the mind and directing the emotions and therefore the body what to do, often the will is totally and utterly enslaved by these other things. So those are parts of our body and parts of our personality. The spirit with its ability to commune with God and to know what he wants us to do through intuition and to have that judge through a conscience and the soul which has the ability to feel emotions to think thoughts through our mind and to exercise decisions and choice through our wills let's talk a little more about how they operate together tomorrow